starting with the first patient, uh, which is a 52 years old female with no past medical history. On November 2016, she complained an ectaric cholestasis, and on December, the abdominal US showed, just showed the common bile duct dilation. Last April, the MRCP revealed the common bile duct and main pancreatic duct dilation with papillary lesion. She underwent EUS that confirmed that four centimeter pedunculated ampulloma with no common bile duct invasion. Biopsy were positive for low grade dysplasia. CPRM shows dilation of common bile duct 14 millimeter in diameter of the main pancreatic duct, six millimeter in diameter, and upstream biliary dilation. In the site of the ampulla obata, we can see a filling defect corresponding to the ampulloma just mentioned. Scheduled procedure, endoscopic papillectomy. Learning about objectives, indication of endoscopic papillectomy. Gain insight into the endoscopic resection technique. Submucosal invasion, yes or no? Discuss the interval for post papillectomy surveillance. We go live to the endoscopic room. Good afternoon. We, saw, we see you. We don't hear you. Oh, he hasn't even got the Skype down. Okay. You can hear me? Yeah. Okay. Now, yeah. So this is a very interesting case that we have to do. I have with me supervising me Mark Barthes, so hopefully we'll be successful. Uh, we have uh, uh, this patient who has had uh, a large ampullary tumor situated in the periampillary area. We are not sure whether the papilla is coming. Uh, check for a papilla is coming from the from the tumor or okay or whether it's lower down. So what we're going to do is first go in down into the duodenum and then have a look at the lesion before we decide what to do. The procedure of course is ampullectomy in this case, but I think uh, we have to study what exactly uh, is the location of the papilla is very important. I'm now in the antral region. My patient is in a, a prone position. I like to do it prone, although Sometimes when the patient is totally prone, this is what happens, that getting up to the uh, pyloric may be difficult. So we just turn the patient a little left lateral, and then your intubation becomes much more easier then. You can see the example here very clearly, that I'm trying to look at the pylorus, and you don't see it very well when the patient is prone. But when the patient is little semi-prone, then you can see it better. No, I think more. Yeah, it's better for you? Yeah, now it's better. I'm trying to locate the pylorus here. And you can see the pylorus there. You can see uh, uh, the answer. the left side now. Yeah. So the, uh, it's not good? It's not very good, but... For about the arm. They have some for problem. So I'm going back again. I'm going to suck out the stomach to make it smaller. You can see. You have a like of a gastric valvulus, huh? With a twist, huh? You see? Yeah, it's a little twisted stomach. See this? So I I have to come back again and go along the lesser curve side. Okay. So I turn to the left a little. There's a little cascading of the stomach in this yeah, case. Very interesting. Yeah, cascade. So there I come back now. And what I did was I changed the direction yeah. completely so that the cascading part goes off. And then I go down, go into the second part. This is a minor papilla, minor which papilla is very prominent. Is very prominent. Enlarged. So I'm now going to put my right knob to the right, fix it there. And then, oh, so the nice, nice lesion that you see here. <coughs> it looks like a standard uh, pedunculated lesion. Yes, pedunculated now we have to see uh, where the papilla is. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to study this a little more carefully to see if I can see... Uh, the papillary orifice anywhere, yep. but basically I think we'll have to lift it up and then have a look at it. So yeah. I'm going to use a spinter tome. I'm using uh, the true tome from Boston, and we'll try and lift it up, Mark, and then see where exactly the yes. orifice is coming from. Uh, I'm not in this case going to attempt any cannulation right now because I want to know 
where we are ah, because it's so difficult to? because it's pedunculated and the part yes, of yeah. the papilla is in the third duodenum yeah so the the main problem is to to see how is your stalk if it is a large stalk a long stalk and after during the resection oh it's very long it's going very low down this is a special uh, pattern can you, can, for you can you open it further it happens sometimes but not so frequently eh? it's very such a pedunculated uh, uh, so here actually if you look at it you see the peduncle quite quite yeah, well yeah. here maybe i'll try and move it from here and yeah. see what happens this hole is peduncleated and so i can see it's the going main right the problem is to know wha what is the thickness of the of the of the stalk huh? Um, yeah. You know, that it's the real advantage of having the MRI, MRCP before the procedure because exactly. you know that there's a dilated bile duct and uh, main pancreatic duct and normal anatomy. Yeah. So could you not just uh, approach the lesion and remove it? Yeah, that, that's the option. If you don't find the opening, that's an option. But what we are trying to look at is if you do find an opening, then the advantage would be then if it is away, sometimes it's a peripapillary lesion not exactly coming from the ampulla then you don't have to worry about stenting for the pancreatic duct and so on. Sometimes, uh, in fact, the ampullary opening may be right here on the side here. I was seeing some bile, but I can't see that now. Uh, so I'm just also trying to assess how much the pedicle is, you know. So it's, it's difficult to get deep into this area to look from below the lesion. So I think uh, we'll have to do what uh, Steve suggests. Now, I don't think there's an indication for injecting here submucosally. No. There's no indication. No, Mark, I don't think. So, I think we'll have to take it off. Now, endoscopic ultrasound, do you show any vessel there in the stock? No, no invasion of the bile duct in the US. And also on an MRI. Huh? So, I'm just going to study it a little further here. So, on the maybe side. in such a case. Uh, the best is to remove, to, to, to cut uh, the stalk. Yeah, yeah. And after... Uh, Excuse me, Nagi yeah. and Mark, would you be so kind to explain to the audience what are, what are the, the criteria for um, 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 how to assess the possibility for um, endoscopic unblock resection? So the criteria for endoscopic unblock would be uh, if it's not laterally spreading, if it's pedunculated like this, then the chance of including the whole thing unblock would be there. If it was laterally spreading, then I would sort of uh, think of doing a piecemeal resection. But in this case, it's coming from a particular stock, so it's actually dragging it down. The one thing that sort of inhibits, because I'm actually trying to go around and check this area carefully because I'm not sure about the lower end where exactly it is. So uh, I'll require a long, very long uh, snare to get around this area. So that's the reason why I'm trying to look around the lower end to see what is exactly the size what type of snare that I'll have to use. So you see here, it's going right there. And uh, of course, uh, we can always use the NBI to look at the pattern there, but it looks like a benign pattern. So we'll go for the snare mm -hmm. now. And in case of uh, the, s the, the spreading of the, the lesion uh, upstream to the common bile bigger? duct, bigger? Uh, do, you yes. do you still S suggest that, that um, the endoscopic removal is feasible, or you, you maybe have, have some criteria like use few millimeters or one centimeter uh, yeah, up, up to length. one centimeter and lower end of the CBD is still possible to take it out endoscopically. Only if it is uh, going beyond uh, one centimeter, we can then use an adjuvant therapy like RFA to burn it off. Uh, to, to me, the appearance looks benign, a uh, benign adenoma. So mm -hmm. that's still an indication for endoscopic removal. This is I, I yeah. think you, you, you have two kind of contraindication. Uh, first, oncological. Undercut. Secondly, technical. The first, oncological is when you have uh, uh, carcinoma uh, at, the, at the surface of the, of the papilla. Uh, so, I mean, you have uh, ulceration, bleeding, and friability of, uh, of the lesions. And the second is when you have invasion of uh, biliary or pancreatic orifice, because you cannot assess uh, really if you are uh, R0 or, or not R0. So, I think How much is this, this is a two uh, oncological points. Three. The technical that points are yeah. about uh, uh, the wider spread uh, against uh, the mucosa, which is adjacent to the main papilla. Yeah. Because if you have that, you have first to reject the main papilla, and secondly, in a second step,
to reject the uh, invasion of the of the mucosa. Yeah. So I got a snare here, which is three centimeters in size, um, three into three. I'll, I'll bending it a little, but I'm not sure whether this will be enough. Also for this case, let's see. Yeah, mm -hmm. maybe. May, may is the largest you have? Okay. Because I think it's uh, the head of the this. this uh, is down. about uh, three to four centimeters. Yeah, so I'll just put the snare down like this. It'll be semi-blind here, uh, and then try and open the snare. Open the snare. Completely, Completely open. So the technique that uh, Hosh showed very nicely when he's using the small in the small intestine, move the scope with the snare open so that you get around this side, and then I'm trying. No, it's not around here. So to get at the pedicle, I must get it obviously. The snare is a giant snare. Uh, no, no, no. Three. It's no, it's we are trying to get it. Now three snare. centimeter diameter. Maybe it's 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 too small. Yeah. Because it's difficult to surround the 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 lesions with with this snare. Let's see if we got. And the, the whole second thing. problem on, on the left part is okay. Maybe on the right part not not fully. Not fully here. Captured. Uh, nearly, uh, nearly. Uh. Yeah. Okay. Very nice. So I'm just moving my move. Nice. I'm just using a movement. The last step is to be sure that yeah. uh, on the downstream part, yeah, yeah, that you we are, are on the stalk and not on the head of the polyp. Yeah. So one of the things I'll do is to sort of lift it up a little. And then just move my scope up and down so that the snare sort of wriggles. And then partially close it a little. Can yeah, you close yeah. partially? Partially, and you partially pull, pull it wait, back gently. It. Yeah. So, so what do you think, Mark? It's I think it's for me. It's okay. It seems to be. If you push your ca the catheter, open, open. Can you open a little? I think we might have to catch it a little more in the back. Yeah. Because we have more space on the pedicle here. Open. Completely open. Now no, it's moving yeah, uh, so alongside the stalk. Yeah. Here. So yeah. It's now can it's you close? Completely close? Okay. close can you? Can you close? Yeah. Okay. So that seems to be better. Yeah. What do you think? I think it's perfect. Yeah, it's, it's good. So, which current settings are you going to use right so now? I'm Pure going cut to or? No, no, no. I'm going to use the uh, polypectomy same setting. So it's going to be effect three, uh, interval one, interval six. Uh, so it's three one six. Uh, oh. I have also have uh, a coagulation mode in between. I can coagulate. Already the color is changing now. But what I have ready with me is a co-op uh, grasper. Uh, I have even hemospray ready in case there's going to be a big bleed that we can't control because yeah. large pedicle like this. It's also important that uh, because Andrew is, uh, 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 if you're going to control it uh, completely. As you like. You no, you, ca you control it, no problem. Okay. Okay. Yeah. So we are going to now close it uh, yeah, completely. Yeah, completely. You got the squeeze? You want to squeeze? No, it's okay. It's no. Yeah. So one of the things is to feel it ourselves, but also it's okay because we have a very experienced person here. It's okay. Otherwise, I do it myself. Now, what I'll do is I'll first use a little quark current. And other important thing is to keep the rod basket open. Keep it open so you don't waste time. Oh, rod net open so that we have to catch it quickly. So I'm going to use a initial quark current to cook it a little there. And then go to undercut Q, which is uh, the usual polypectomy setting. I'm moving it a little as I do this so that and the reason why I'm moving it is I want it to be free from the walls, both both sides. And here, of course, is away from the muscular wall. So it's cutting through nicely now, moving it a little, again using a little coagulation current. It's okay. That's it's very large. Yeah. yeah, it's very large. And usually, when you cut the stalk after, you easily see the biliary orifice and pancreatic orifice. Yeah, when you do this, hopefully, we see the orifice. So then we can think of pancreatic cannulation. Okay. Moving it a little. So you're feeling it? And s sometimes it's required to, to open okay. and to cl close again to avoid the carbonization and to increase the efficacy yeah. of the of the resection very hard maybe 
Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah now, now uh, okay. So now the rod basket ready. Now yeah. is the, uh -huh. the moment because of Because the stalk is so large. Okay, now okay. it's nearly finished. Fantastic. Now you see. So the now basket. I'm just going to quickly go into the rod basket. We have to move uh, to okay. another case. Nagi, we're back with you. Yeah, okay. so you can see the lesion that we removed. It's uh, it's almost uh, four centimeters in size, yes. and yes. the mark is actually spreading it out to show you the ducts also. And, and I'll uh, show you the duct. No, no, don't move, don't move. Uh, this is, uh, there is a, uh, an answer. Now we can see maybe yes, the minor. ERCP. Yeah, now if you can, yeah, you go to Ready? the ERCP picture. We cannulated the pancreatic okay. orifice now, which is nicely seen here. You can see the when the tumor is completely gone. Okay. But the, the problem here is that we have an answer here, so we have to manipulate the guide wire. Need an angle there. Uh, we require an angle. We can Thermo shift to an angled thermo. So, so when you have an answer like this, it's better to shift to an angled guide wire. But you can see that after the polyp was removed, you can see the anatomy very nicely. This is the orifice of the and the only mistake more many people do is that they okay. think when they when open it up completely that this is a bile duct because some bile stain around it. But you always when you do an ampullectomy, the bile duct is very high above. In fact, the bile duct is just below the fold there. And what we have cannulated is the pancreatic duct. And uh, we are now going to try with an angled wire <coughs> uh, because of this uh, angulation of the pancreatic duct. We don't want to inject too much of contrast. Uh, we try and go this way. Yeah. And just come back. I think it's working together. We have to start here. Yeah. And this is going towards the minor papilla now. The minor papilla also is quite prominent. The other possibility is to go through the minor papilla. But anyway, even a short pancreatic stent in this case may be okay. In case we don't get too far in, we can uh, leave the wire. No, I think this is a side branch. We don't want oh. to. One minute. Can you come back? We yes. have to move uh, for okay. in another room. Okay, now we are through. Room. Now can you see the Fantastic. Uh, yeah, very nice. Cannulation, pancreatic and cannulation. Very we nice. See. Sure. And now we'll put up a pancreatic stent here. Okay. And then in this case, I want to also cannulate the bile duct because there's a slight elevation of alkaline yeah. phosphatase. Normally, so I wouldn't do that. Yeah, so I want to do that just to be sure that you don't have anything in the lower end there. So we put a pancreatic stent, and then yeah. uh, from our side, mostly the procedure would be over there. 